Hi, I'm Dr. Julia Hecking with Blue Ridge Equine Clinic. This is my licensed technician, Jesse, and uh, this is our patient today, Merlin. Um, we are going to talk about eyes and eye exams today, uh, also kind of what to do in case of an eye emergency. So um, first, uh, we're just going to start by saying that um, most of the time, uh, eyes especially acute eye injuries, uh, we do consider to be an emergency or a somewhat urgent thing uh, to be seen just because eyes can go bad and have issues that could lead to permanent blindness. So we try to jump on eyes pretty quick when we're treating them. Um, we'll go through some of the more common things that we see in eyes uh, and problems and then also a lot of our medications and treatments. But first, we're just going to start with um, uh, coming out to see a horse. Uh, we're going to perform an eye exam on this horse. So this horse actually has a, uh, a blind eye here from a traumatic injury that happened out in the field. Um, so he does not have vision in this eye. Uh, so that's why you'll notice that that eye is slightly regressed into, his, uh, into that socket. So, um, But we're going to pretend like this is a somewhat emergency type situation. I've been called out to the farm to see uh, the horse for an acute eyeball issue. Uh, so first when I arrive, the first thing I do is just sort of uh, start looking back from afar. Uh, does the horse have drainage coming from its eyes? Is one of the eyeballs squinting or painful compared to the other one? Um, are the eyelashes pointing in the same direction? Um, sometimes uh, minor um, pain, uh, all you'll notice is that the eyelashes may be pointed in a slightly different direction. You know, obviously in his case, uh, the eyes are asymmetrical and this one is uh, somewhat regressed. And again, that's just due to the fact that he's had a chronic eye issue and uh, the muscles that hold that eye in the socket have basically atrophied from lack of use, plus the, the eye has reduced in pressure and everything else. So, um, but so first we just kind of look to see, okay, do I have a painful, swollen, tearing eye? Uh, a lot of times with these guys to get a good exam done, we'll actually go ahead and give them some sedative. And um, just so we can perform a really good thorough exam, especially if we're worried about like a foreign object or anything like that, that we want to really get a good exploration of that eye. So um, in his case, I'm going to give him some sedative. This will make him a little more amenable to me poking and prodding in his eye. So that's kind of the first step. Uh, you know, I don't always sedate them, but again, if I want to do a really thorough exam, that is uh, sometimes necessary. Um, and then the other thing that you will sometimes see us perform is uh, something called a auriculopalpebral nerve block. And what this block does is it makes it so he can't squint that eyelid um, so that I can actually get a good exam done because some of their muscles are so strong, especially with their eyelids, that even sedated in a really painful eye, they will work hard at squeezing that eye shut and so I can't get a good exam done. So that nerve block allows me to manipulate the eyelid without them squeezing shut. So um, usually just do a quick scrub of this area, get it cleaned up, and then um, have my numbing agent, Carbocaine, drawn up, ready to go. And uh, obviously you want to have a good holder because um, we are putting a needle near the eye. Um, and I'm going to palpate the nerve. And once I strum it or find it, I'm actually going to kind of lift the skin a little bit and put a needle right underneath where that nerve lies. This will cause that area to be numb for probably four to six hours. So it's not a long-term uh, numbing agent, but it just allows me to do my exam. So um, put that there, and we're going to let that kind of soak for a couple minutes and get, get that area nice and numb so I can manipulate that eyelid. Um, so a lot of times when we're coming out, we're concerned about eye ulcers or something being uh, stuck in the eye or, uh, you know, first I just have a brief look at the eye itself. Um, you know, do I see any hay or anything like that stuck in the lids? Um, do I notice any 
discoloration to the cornea, which is the most outer layer of the eye there. Uh, sometimes we'll see corneal edema, which is basically just swelling within the cornea itself. That may have a bluish or whitish tint to it. Uh, sometimes we'll notice blood vessels in the, the cornea, and that can be going to an area where there's potentially a foreign object or an ulcer or something like that. Um, sometimes we'll be able to see an abrasion to the cornea or what we call a corneal ulcer. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we use our stain strips, but first I'll just have a good kind of general look to the eye and see if I see anything. So, you know, obviously now, now that he's sedate and his eyelid is numb, I can manipulate this really well so I can get a good thorough exam done. If you actually want to step a little closer, we can get um, pretty close up there. So sometimes I will... Um, flush some saline in that eye if I'm concerned that there is a foreign object in there or some hay. You know, unfortunately, horses don't have fingers, so they can't rub hay out of their eye if they get some in there. So uh, in his case, we're just going to flush a little bit uh, to kind of make sure there isn't anything in there. Um, check really good underneath those lids. Make sure that there's no hay or anything up there. Um, I will also look at uh, the conjunctiva, which is basically the underside of the lids there, that pink tissue. Um, sometimes uh, in more allergy type cases or really anytime there's a painful eye, um, those will be swollen. Uh, sometimes they'll also be extra red, which just kind of tells us that there's extra inflammation in there. Um, so once I've kind of done that, I will usually take a first look with my ophthalmoscope, which allows me to see into the deeper layers of the eye in addition to the cornea. Uh, so take a look around there. Ideally, we want to do this in a dark area so that that pupil is nice and open so that we can see into the back chamber of the eye. So um, we'll have a quick look around there and see what we can see. And then after that, we'll go to uh, our stain strip. Um, this is called fluorescein stain. So basically, if there's any break in the cornea or the corneal layers, um, it will uptake stain. So I will, uh, it will show a kind of yellowish green spot on the eye itself. So we're going to go ahead and basically we just kind of put this in there, let them blink it a couple times to distribute the stain. Um, so, and then uh, because you get a lot of stain with that, sometimes I will go ahead and flush afterwards. That'll flush all that extra out. But if there's any that's still stuck on the cornea itself, then I know that that's an area of ulceration. So get all that extra green out. So, so and in his case, um, you want to zoom in just a little bit. He may have had a previous ulcer or scar. You can see there's a big white spot at the lower edge of his eye there. So that may have been where a big ulceration happened. Again, nobody unfortunately has a complete history on this horse's eye, but unfortunately it was enough to cause him to go blind. So again, that's why we like to jump on things pretty quick because obviously we don't want that end result. So once I've uh, got my stain done, I'll take another look with my ophthalmoscope. I even have a special uh, blue light on this that will show up extra, uh, extra well for um, any sort of corneal ulceration. Um, so I'll have a second look around there and uh, see if I see any sort of stain uptake that would tell us that there's an ulcer. You know, obviously in his case, we're not going to see one today because that's uh, not his current issue. So um, other conditions that we see commonly, on, uh, especially on emergency, would be foreign objects poked into the eye. Uh, horses have very big eyes that stick out and they don't always, uh, they aren't always careful about where they put those eyes. Plus the other thing uh, we often see are things like hay seeds and that whatnot uh, that can sometimes get into their lids themselves. And unfortunately, again, because they don't have fingers, they can't rub them out. Uh, so uh, corneal ulcers are probably one of the more common things I see. Also, uh, objects actually poked into their cornea themselves itself. And then uh, uveitis is another condition that we see pretty commonly. Uh, many of you will know it as moon blindness, uh, but it is a, a somewhat common condition in Appaloosa breeds, 
but uh, it can happen in any breed. We see it in warm bloods, we see it in all sorts of breeds. Uh, but uveitis basically just means inflammation within the eye. And it can be caused by lots of different things, but uh, kind of some of the classic signs of that are a big, swollen, painful eye. Sometimes I'll see that bluish haze, which is, again, corneal edema. Um, and in those cases, uh, getting that inflammation calmed down as quickly as possible uh, is going to hopefully lead to the best outcome. Any of these conditions, if left untreated, can possibly lead to blindness. So that's why we have to be very uh, quick about treating and treating with the proper medication. Um, so again, once I've performed my full thorough exam, uh, then we can go on to treatments. So over here, uh, we've got some of the various medications that I will treat eye ulcers with. Um, I really like Banamine, which is a pain med for eye pain, um, but Butte and Equiox are also options in terms of treatments for, uh, for eye pain. Um, but I just, I find I really like Banamine, at least in the acute stages. Uh, then over here, we have some of our more common um, our more common ophthalmic meds that we see. Um, the first one is uh, neomycin and polymyxin B. It's got a lot of a long name to it, but basically it's triple antibiotic for the eye. Uh, you don't want to use just regular triple antibiotic. Uh, you do want to make sure it's an ophthalmic preparation that is pH balanced and um, non-irritating to the eye. So this is just triple antibiotic for the eye. Um, we use that very commonly, especially in ulcers, but in, in all types of uh, all types of conditions. Um, some other medications that you may see. Um, this is triple antibiotic, but you can see it says Neopolydex. So that what that means is it's got a steroid in it, and usually the steroids that are used in ophthalmic meds are either dexamethasone or hydrocortisone. Both of those are meant to decrease inflammation of the eye. However, you do have to be very careful when using these meds. You don't want to use these meds unless you've had a vet perform an ophthalmic exam on the eye and rule out any sort of ulcer because putting steroid in an eye that has an ulcer can actually make the ulcer much worse and um, make a possibly lead to a worse infection in that ulcer. So uh, you just want to be very careful if you have multiple meds on hand to read the label carefully and make sure that there's no steroid in that eye medication unless you've been told specifically by the veterinarian to put that medication in there. Um, I use this a lot with uveitis cases, but again, sometimes uveitis can be complicated because sometimes they'll have an ulcer because of the painful eye, they've rubbed an ulcer. So sometimes we have to let the ulcer heal first before we can treat the other inflammation. Um, lastly, another common medication that a lot of people have on hand is atropine. What atropine does is it actually dilates the pupil. I know many people have, uh, have their eyes dilated when they go to the eye doctor. Uh, we use this for a lot of conditions also. It actually helps reduce pain um, because sometimes we think in a painful eye that that pupil is spasming. And so if we can dilate that eye, that stops the spasming, which can help with some pain relief. Um, and plus, we want to get that pupil nice and open because sometimes some of the inflammation in the eye can uh, lead to scarring with that pupil shut. So we want to be careful that that doesn't happen. So um, sometimes we will use atropine in the eye. Um, I do tell clients to be careful if they are using atropine in the eye, again, to remember that it will dilate the eye. So you want to be careful when you're turning them out, especially in bright sunlight. Usually I'll either have people turn them out at night or uh, put a fly mask on them so they have some shade protection because unfortunately they don't have sunglasses that they can put on. Uh, so um, uh, that is a great medication uh, for a lot of different purposes. Um, I'll use it sometimes in uveitis. I'll use it sometimes in ulcers. It all just depends on the, uh, the condition. But those are probably three of the most common medications that we use for eyeballs. And um, I guess uh, my next presentation, I'm going to go through some couple of actual horse pictures with eyes. Uh, and show you a couple of the common conditions that we see out in the field and how we treat them.